Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I'm your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted to welcome a fitness ex entrepreneur and a fellow IPO from New North Virginia, USA, Mr. Craig Dixon. Craig, welcome to the show. Thank you, Ashutosh. I'm really happy to be here today. Thank you. Craig is the co-founder and co-CEO of the Saint of an organization which is uh, which is called the Saint James. And as I mentioned, he's a fellow member of the YPO. So, Craig, before we talk of the Saint James, tell me about your own journey from the world of law to entrepreneurship. Sure. Well, I think one important thing to to share at the outset is that I am the child of Jamaican immigrants mm -hmm. uh, to the United States. And so everybody in my family were entrepreneurs because they came to the United States. They did not go to college and they had to build a life. Mm -hmm. My father was apprenticed to an electrician when he was 15 years of age mm -hmm. and became an electrical contractor. So I was always around entrepreneurs and had an entrepreneurial um, instinct and passion myself. I, I, I always started businesses. I had paper routes. I sold knives door to door, kitchen knives door to door. I, um, I, I was always looking for ways to make money, cutting grass, shoveling uh, driveways and the like. And so in my mind, as I was thinking about what I wanted to do with my life, I always wanted to be in business. Hmm. When I was a, a junior in college and was having a conversation with my father about what I was going to do next with my life, hmm. um, I, was, I was actually focused on getting a job. I thought I might go to New York and either work for a consulting firm or go into banking. Hmm. And my father was very, very strongly against that. He wanted me to go to continue to go to school. In hmm. fact, he wanted a doctor. Uh -huh. uh, that was his dream as a child growing up. And he, he, he wanted me to kind of fulfill that dream. Hmm. He did not want me to be an entrepreneur. Hmm. Um, after spending a lot of time reflecting on uh, what I was interested in um, and, and then reading a very important book that had a big impact on my life, hmm. I decided to go to law school. Hmm. So the book that I read, was a book, uh, the autobiography of a man named Reginald F. Lewis. Mm. And the book is called Why Should White Guys Have All the Fun? Mm. Reginald Lewis was a, an entrepreneur and at one time was the richest black man in America. He mm. started off as a lawyer uh, and then became a leveraged buyout uh, entrepreneur. And, and he was very, very successful. He died very young, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people don't know about him. Mm -hmm. But I read that book and I said, this is a blueprint that I could follow for mm -hmm. my own life. I could mm -hmm. fulfill my parents' desire that I get additional education. Um, but I could I could pursue my own path to become an entrepreneur. So I figured I would learn how to do deals. That would be the practice that I would go into. Mm -hmm. And then eventually I'd figure out how to do my own. And so, so that's what I did. Okay. That's interesting. And as they say, the rest is history. That's right. That's okay. right. So let's move, Craig, to the St. James. Tell me a little bit about this venture and your motivation to get into fitness. So the St. James is a premium uh, collection of destinations, events, and digital experiences mm -hmm. that help people maximize their human potential through the power of sports and wellness. Okay. And it is an outgrowth of the experiences that my business partner and I had growing up in the DC area as kids, being irrationally passionate about sports and wanting to play everything that we could and to compete. Mm -hmm. And those experiences in sports had a really positive impact on our lives, our mm -hmm. character development, and taught us so many lessons that we continue to apply in our lives as we got mm -hmm. to our careers and became adults and then, you know, fathers with children of our own. And we, you know, we really believe that sports is an underappreciated paradigm for teaching and, and life development. Correct. And, and we recognized, as we were thinking about how to start the business, we recognized that there were two high demand problems that exist in every major metropolitan area in the United States. Mm -hmm. And we suspect in some large cities around the world. Mm -hmm. The first is that there are not enough turf, ice, pools, courts, et cetera, like the playing and training surfaces to meet the demand of people who want to use them. Right. And to the extent that this stuff does exist, it is usually poorly maintained and under-programmed. Mm. The second high demand problem is that for the active family, mm. they face 
highly fragmented marketplace where you have to run to one side of town to take a child to ice hockey. You have to run to the other side of town to take a child to cricket. Hmm. And if the parents are also active, it's a real knife fight to figure out who's going to pick up whom and how everybody's going to get their needs Hmm. met. So we concluded that if you could aggregate the playing and training services for multiple sports into one place, Hmm deliver services in a vertically integrated way with your own coaches, programs, and experiences, and then wrap around it a hospitality experience mm-hmm. with a full service restaurant and a meta spa and other you know, comfortable amenities, you could create something that would become the center of the universe for active families in every community. Mm. Wow. And, and so that is how the St. James you know, flagship campus was born. And that was the first product that we introduced in the marketplace in 2018. Mm-hmm end of 2018 Mm. and it's 450,000 square feet Mm -hmm. of you know a premium playing and training services and competition services with uh, a a wide array of wellness amenities as well as some pure kind of family-centered entertainment experiences Mm. that has really been um, a game changer in the dc region Mm. we had 2.2 million visits in 2021 Wow. which was you know, really impressive given that for the first six months of 2021, we were still suffering from the effects of, of Omicron and yeah. people were so cautious about uh, going, uh, going out. Mm-hmm. And we're on pace to have 3 million visits this year in 2022. So um, that is, you know, that, that's, that's how the business got started, the genesis of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it was really a, a factor of my partner and I recognizing what we thought was an emerging trend in the way that people in the United States live their lives mm-hmm. and a real gap in the marketplace that had to be filled by somebody. And so mm-hmm. we said, why not us? Mm-hmm. Absolutely fascinating. So, you know, Craig, you mentioned uh, a little, you know, a few minutes back about the advantages of sports. Uh, tell me if some of the few that come to the come to you immediately on what are the benefits of sports in our lives? Sure. So sports is one of the few places where you can fail Mm -hmm. and um, it not destroy your life. Mm -hmm. Um, You, you learn, you win games, you lose games, you make the play, you don't make the play. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, losing a game has a big impact and there are consequences of that. And if you want to win, you want to win the game, you want to win the championship. But at the end of the day, mm-hmm. if you fail on the field of play, it's not going to destroy your life. Mm-hmm. You're not going to go to jail. Mm-hmm. You're not going to, you won't be, you won't fail to get into the university that you want to get into. Mm-hmm. And, and so it's an opportunity for you to experiment, for you to take risk, mm-hmm. for you to test yourself, for you to learn how to come back, learn resiliency, learn how to come back from failure because you mm-hmm. can come back on the next play, mm-hmm. you can come back in the next game, you can come back in the next season. Mm-hmm. And it is, um, it teaches you discipline. It teaches you how to work toward goals. It, te- it teaches you how to work with other people mm-hmm. and to understand how to connect with other people, and often from a wide range of backgrounds that may be very different from your own. Mm-hmm. It teaches you how to communicate and it teaches you how to, um, teaches you also teaches you how to win. Mm-hmm. And, and that's an important skill to learn because mm-hmm. it helps you um, become successful in life. And and the beauty of the beauty of these experiences is that They translate into other areas of your life. It's not Mm. just applicable if you decide that you want to spend your life becoming a professional athlete, Mm. which is something that a lot of people do. But Mm -hmm. most people who play sports don't become professional athletes. Mm. They become doctors. They become teachers. They become moms. They become dads. They become Mm. friends and colleagues. And these lessons that you learn in sports are directly applicable to everything that you do in the rest of your life. Mm. And it's the other important um, the other important thing about sports is it really teaches you a habit and discipline of taking care of your body and building your body, which is a which is something you need to do lifelong because mm. we only have one. Mm. And uh, it's really important to um, take care of our health. Uh, so so those are some of the lessons that that you that you learn through sports that I think are really, really powerful and um that's why you know we're in the business we're in. Thank you. That's what a great response. Thank you. So this campus that you told talked to me about this four hundred fifty thousand square foot campus. Uh, do you see multiple centers all over the U.S.? Absolutely. We think that there is significant demand 
around the United States and in some places internationally for these types of destinations. And it's reflective of the way that um, societies that become that have a growing level of affluence and therefore um, growing levels of disposable income and free time mm. uh, will, will will live their lives. In, in the United States, a couple of generations ago, these consumers may have bought country club memberships mm. and you know go to the golf course or sit by the pool, and that was a, a, a way that people socialized. Now. Um, that's all that for, for a lot of people, that mm. was not a world that they could access or those are not places that they could access. And so mm. it tends to be a fairly closed set of experiences. Mm. But if you look at the way that people spend their lives today mm. in the United States, mm. very many parents are spending, you know, their, their, their evenings after work and their weekends, taking their mm. children to practices, taking their children to games and tournaments. And, um, and so we have a set of experiences that allow everybody in the family to come to one place where they can find something to do that taps into their passions. Hmm. Um, and, and, in, and even if they're not particularly into sports, there are other things that you can do from a wellness perspective, our meta spa, our active entertainment center that has climbing games, birthday party rooms, and other types of, you know, just fun experiences. Hmm. You can create a place where there's something for everybody in the family to do, and you can do it all together even if they're even if you have different interests and we think the demand for this type of experience is exploding in the united states and exploding in other countries mm -hmm. that are following a similar pattern of development and um having you know the kinds of income and more free time or leisure time to, mm -hmm. to employ it mm -hmm. fascinating and do you see this uh, trend of fitness and if I can add the word networking, um, across all ages, or do you see this more in the millennials and the Gen Z parents and their children? So I think that you you see it um, certainly in the Gen X, Gen, in the Gen Xers and younger. And I'm a Gen Xer. Yeah. Um, and and you know some of the boomers are also very very active, mm -hmm. but you know. Generations ago, when when people got older, they they stopped working and they stopped also money in many cases mm -hmm. being active altogether. Correct. And there are significant uh, significant negative impacts that happen on the happen to their quality of life and their health as a result. Mm -hmm. I think that you know globally we have all become much more aware of the importance of physical activity, no matter what your age is. Mm -hmm. And so, as subsequent generations. Um, spent their childhoods, like like my partner and I did, playing sports, being active, and we're now adults with children of our own, that pattern only becomes more reinforced with every subsequent generation. And so you will have, um, the, the I think, the generations to come in the future be very, very um, used to, you know, be very used to participating in physical activity their entire lives, sharing this with their friends, mm -hmm. using it as a way to socialize, using it as a way to network, using it as a way to enjoy time with, with family and friends. And as, you, as we all know, people like to do business with their friends. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, we, we definitely think that there will, the, the, there will be an acceleration mm -hmm. globally of this type of um, set of behaviors and experiences mm -hmm. that, that, that will you know, create additional opportunities for us. So, uh, Craig, would this be any different from the clubs that have been in existence for a very, very long period of time? Well, if you're talking about country clubs and private clubs, we are Correct. very, very, we are okay. very, very different. Mm. And and you know, the first way we are very different is mm. that we are affordable. Mm. Um, so we, we deliver a premium experience that is still broadly accessible to to people. Um, in the United States, your typical country club um, might require that you put down an initiation fee of between seventy-five and one hundred thousand dollars U.S. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, you have to go through a screening process where people who are currently members get to decide whether you are their kind of person. Mm. And, and then you have your monthly dues on top of that. Mm. Um, at the St. James, we, we have a membership experience, but it is nothing like that. That the type mm. of membership um, is, is what you might find in other kinds of health club settings mm -hmm. where it's a matter of 
um, being able to pay what is a much more modest initiation fee that may be a couple of hundred dollars. And then mm. you are you have a membership dues that mm. is in a similar zone, depending on how many people in your family mm. are members. Mm. So it is far and away more affordable and accessible mm. to a broad number of people, especially because it is not our job to try to keep people out. Um, I think in, in, you know, in the, in the private club paradigm, that is often how um, people experience it. This is a situation where we are trying to keep people out. Whereas mm. at the St. James, we're trying to bring people in. Mm. And, and so I, I, I think that it's a very different kind of experience and a very different paradigm as a result. Mm. That's fantastic. Another aspect of uh, fitness is nutrition and food. Yes. How are you handling this very critical part uh, which is needed for fitness other than sports, of course. Sure. So we have, uh, we developed a, a, a brand called Vim and Victor, which is our, our food and beverage brand. Mm. And um, there, there are a couple of different products under that brand. One is our full service Vim and Victor restaurant, which we have at the St. James flagship mm. in, in Virginia. And that has a combination of a grab and go wellness mm. bar, as mm. well as a uh, seated dining experiences mm -hmm. and and the menu for this this uh this experience we position as healthy ish okay mm -hmm. so healthy ish means that we have a range from very very healthy like sa composed salads and smoothies acai bowls and mm -hmm. and and, the, and um nutrition bars and and, and the like mm -hmm. all the way to a burger yes you can get a burger okay. but we, we make sure that we get we use high quality ingredients. And so the quality of the food and the quality of the ingredients that you're consuming mm. is high and better for you than you, you may find in other places. Mm. And the reason why we, we, we have a healthy-ish positioning is that we understand that people want a range of options and mm. there are going to be times where you want to be very disciplined and there are going to be times when you want to indulge. And we mm. want to be able to serve both because we're people, we're humans, and we all, you know, we're not all necessarily going to eat uh, celery and carrot sticks all the time. Absolutely. Um, and, and we think that that's kind of reflective of how, of real life and what is a sustainable approach to the way that people eat. Um, we also have you know, on our team people who will give you guidance around nutrition and the types of uh, the types of choices that you should you should make when you are um, eating because the the things that you put inside your body, you know, the food that you eat has you know as much of an impact and sometimes more of an impact mm. on your health outcomes than how much you exercise you, you can't out exercise a bad diet mm. um so so we we that is a, certainly an important part of the kind of coaching approach mm. that we take and mm. we really do think about ourselves as a developmental organization and so one of the one of the um core competencies we have is the coaching and training of you know athletes we believe that everybody's an athlete and mm. so we want to deliver um, that expertise in, in a way that can reach everybody depending on where they are. Mm -hmm. and, and we're also starting to digitize that. So it's not just something that we're delivering purely in our physical destinations, mm -hmm. but we're also rolling out digital wellness coaching products that use an app to develop a program for people and provide guidance and coaching on, on an ongoing basis so that you can, you can basically take your game plan wherever you are. Right. Mm -hmm. you know, if you look at some of the things that athletes get um, athletes, who can be at the highest levels. They get coaching. So mm -hmm. they have people who have expertise who coach and provide them with coaching and provide them with a plan. So you get a, you get coaching and you get a plan and you get positive reinforcement and support. And those are things that everybody needs. Mm -hmm. And 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 we want to be able to to deliver the St. James experience to people no matter where they are in the world. Mm -hmm. And so you can be coming into our physical destinations or traveling for business or for, for fun or never, never, never walk into one of our physical destinations and still be able to tap into mm -hmm. um, the expertise and support that will help you maximize your potential, whatever your goals are. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. My next question, and I have time for two or three more questions. Uh, what has gone into building the St. James as a brand in the world of fitness, in the world of uh, um, you know, staying well or wellness? Sure. So I think one, one place to start is at the beginning uh, in answering that question. And what I mean is that 
we were really intentional about creating a brand. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes in this space, particularly as you look at uh, youth sports, so you know we kind of span the, the the fitness health club space all the way down to the youth participation uh, participatory sports space, mm -hmm. and what you often see are um, organizations or businesses that operate that don't have a brand at all, or if mm -hmm. they have a brand, it's directly tied to a particular town or mm -hmm. location where they are. And we were really thinking much bigger than that. Mm -hmm. uh, we thought about how the success of the biggest brands in the world and how they, um, how they built those brands and decided to, to, to take that approach in building our brand. Mm -hmm. So we thought about what the name of the company would be or the brand would be. We mm -hmm. wanted to find a name or a brand that, was, that sounded premium, mm -hmm. that had an enduring quality to it, Mm -hmm. that had an inherent sense of trustworthiness that was different um, and would strike people as different, particularly in the space where we, we operated. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to make sure that every aspect of that brand, from the logos, the visuals, the brand colors, and, and the experience that you uh, get when you go to our website, when you go to our app, when you go into our physical destinations, mm -hmm. when you see our team and what they're wearing, was all coherent and consistent and support, uh, supported that. And so as we thought about um, the, the brand for the business, we wanted the brand to also represent the idea of being the center of the universe. So this mm -hmm. is something that I said earlier. We want the St. James to be the center of the universe uh, for active families in every community. Mm -hmm. where we mm -hmm. And so that, um, that led us to selecting the St. James as the brand. And mm -hmm. it comes from the court of St. James which is the seat of the British monarchy. Correct. And for the 300 plus years of the British empire, mm -hmm. the court of St. James was the center of the universe for mm -hmm. all diplomatic and economic matters Correct. Um, that, uh, that occurred there. Mm -hmm. And and so we thought that that was an appropriate brand name because it did represent the ideas of be, this idea of being the center of the universe and all these other qualities that I articulated. Mm -hmm. And we took this this thinking and worked with branding agencies to develop all the brand assets that were consistent with that brand, that brand promise and that brand proposition hmm. and um, worked really hard to, to develop what we thought were an attractive set of brand assets uh, and visuals to articulate what it was that the St. James was going to be. And this, hmm. and, and this was critically important because um, one, one thing to, to note is that, we were trying to build the business before we actually had a physical destination that we could actually show people, right? Okay. So we were, we were using renderings and descriptions to describe what the St. James flagship campus would be. And it was something that nobody had ever seen before. Mm -hmm. And so that was also very, very difficult. So the <laughs> brand had to really carry a lot of weight or do a lot of work for us to help mm -hmm. people understand that even if they didn't quite understand what it was that we were building, mm -hmm. it was something that was going to be compelling and that they would want to be a part of. Mm -hmm. And so um, we invested a tremendous amount in developing, you know, developing the brand. And then as we introduced the brand into the DC marketplace, we used a combination of channels, both grassroots, broadcast, digital, you know, we, we, we did everything that we could, networking, um, in order to help people understand exactly what the St. James was. And mm -hmm. we brought people in to follow us as the, as the actual physical destination, this first product was being built. Mm -hmm. We had cams that would show the progress of the construction. And, and we did a lot of, uh, a lot of earned media to help articulate and, and, mm -hmm. and help people understand exactly what we were doing. Amazing. Amazing, and the work and the work continues. The work mm, continues. No, no, absolutely, absolutely. So. I've often said brands are like children. You know, you need to keep on investing them all their lives. You absolutely, know? But that's fantastic. And my last question to you, Craig, and this is for the many, many people who will listen to our conversation. Based on your own amazing journey and your journey as an entrepreneur, what would you say are three learnings you would want our viewers and listeners to take away? from this conversation? Sure. Um, I think the first thing that I would say is that I am just like you, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Oftentimes we will see very, very successful people and think of them as somehow uh, an alien 
that um, has superpowers and uh, has done things that that we could never do. And yeah. I I whenever I and I do a lot of speaking to uh, to, to young people, especially. Mm. And I tell them, listen, I, mm. I was just like you. Mm. I was a kid sitting in a chair, listen, you know, sometimes listening to somebody uh, and, and sometimes being bored by it and, you know, or being impressed by it and wondering how I could do those things. Mm. And, and so don't think of me or any other successful person that you meet as somehow mm. uh, special in that they are something that you could never achieve. I mean, they're special because they, they've, they've achieved certain things and they've worked really, really hard to get there. Mm -hmm. But this is a, you know, there are patterns and lessons that you can take from these examples mm -hmm. and follow and apply to your own life and do the same things or even bigger things. Right. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm just like you and, and I, I really believe that. And I, I try to engage with everybody that I meet with that perspective mm -hmm. um, and, and that level of humility. Mm -hmm. The second thing that I would say is, um, you know, the, what I've learned is the importance of really working on your mindset. Hmm. And in being able to um, develop yourself to maximize your potential. And, hmm. and I break mindset down into kind of three pieces. Hmm. One is, you know, self-efficacy. Two, self-talk. And three is consistently acting accordingly. Hmm. And, and so self-efficacy really just essentially means believing that things will work out in the way that you intend. Hmm. And. And that um, is a result of a couple of different factors. One is just your past experience. And so, you know, there are things that we do very, very well and mm -hmm. have done them a million times. We've mastered them. And so when we set out to do those things, we believe that they're going to you know, work out in the way that we intend. Yeah. But sometimes we don't have experience. Sometimes we want to do something that um, is different than we've, we've had experience doing before. And that was that was the case with the St. James for me. I, mm. I was a, I was an M&A lawyer before. And right. and while I had certain leadership experiences, I was I had never really run a business of this type in this way. Mm. So what you also have to do is look at examples of people who have done something similar before. Mm. Study them, listen to what they read, their books, listen to their TED Talks or their, their podcasts or listen to the brand called you where okay. they talk about these things yes. and, and, and take lessons from that. So if you see people doing these things, you understand it can be done. You understand how it can be done. And then you take those lessons learned and apply them to what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, the third, you know, self-efficacy um, piece I will, I will say is the visualization of yourself doing it. So, mm -hmm. you know, the mind works in a really interesting way in that it believes whatever you tell it. And so mm. if you tell yourself that you can do something, you will begin to believe it. And if you visualize, you see yourself doing it, you see yourself getting up in front of the crowd, you see yourself getting up to make that pitch, you see yourself mm. actually being successful in doing a particular thing, you will start to teach your mind mm. that you can do it. And so that's self-efficacy, self-talk. Self-talk, you know, we have this constant you know, soundtrack going on in our heads or a playlist going on in our heads that, you know, we're, what we're telling ourselves uh, a certain story. And, you know, sometimes it's positive, sometimes it's negative. If we, mm. if we experience a setback or a loss, we can often get into this very negative cycle. Mm. But again, you have complete control over your playlist, just like you have control of your Spotify playlist or your, your Apple Music yeah. playlist. Mm. You can control what you tell yourself about yourself mm. and you will believe it. So make sure that you're intentional about what you tell yourself and and how you you know how you talk to yourself or think about the things that you've done um both your successes and your failures and then and then the third is just consistently acting accordingly um mm -hmm. you have to you have to become the person that you want to be mm -hmm. and so thinking about how a person like that would behave how per the, the decisions they make the disciplines that they adopt and then being consistent about how you do those things um, will uh, will make it impossible for you to not get to those goals. So mm -hmm. those three things, you know, uh, have been really, really important for me to develop in myself and the learning that I've taken that is that's helped me become successful. And and a lot of that came from um, not only my experiences, uh, you know, on the field of play. And 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 believe me, I had more failures than I had success. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you know, my parents and put and making sure that I have people around me who who know what's right about me, Correct. believe in me, and tell me that. So th that would be, that'd be what I would share. Fantastic. And on that note, Craig, in your three amazing lessons, I am just like you, uh, which is really saying successful people are just like each one of us. 
Second one is work on your mindset. And third one is visualization of your self-belief. Become the person you want to be. Thank you so much for speaking to me. Thank you for talking to me about your incredible journey uh, from the world of law to entrepreneurship. Thank you for talking to me about the St. James. I mean, I'm really amazed at what an incredible concept this is. And I'm reasonably certain that I will be seeing hundreds and thousands of the St. James all over the world as you roll it out with your own company-owned uh, premises and franchise premises. Thank you again for speaking to me and good luck to you. Thank you very much. It's been wonderful to talk to you and I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.